Hey everybody, Dave here. Everything is working out. We actually hit the record button instead of the stream button, or the virtual camera button, or the button button. You know, just anything that makes it work, we hit. How y'all doing tonight? And as always, I've got Greg. The Badger probably be worth me. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Sad, but I'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Uh, a little bit heartbroken. But, uh, yeah, how are you doing? Listening to that going great. We, we, we uh, talked about stormy weather literally today recording time and release time we're recording literally the day our last episode went out so everybody got to hear about smoking and stormy weather and the whole mandalorian thing and you you're you're starting off the very next episode with i'm sad but we'll talk about that in a minute <laughs> oh it's not, nothing controversial or anything uh, that just struck me funny that's all <laughs> oh for sure <laughs> But on a, on a happy note, I finally found the subscriber list for the most recent subscribers to the channel. And I, th I think one of them I may have called out before, but I'm going to do them all anyway. Uh, we had two in January and one just on Valentine's Day. So back in January on the 13th, we had somebody calling himself Flat Map Piper, not to be confused with Flat Cat Piper. They're two different people. I checked. <laughs> And we have Central Coast, Coast blah, 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 Central Coast Briars. Thank you so much. And this month in February we have Crovlad One. So I don't know if you're like, uh, you know, uh, Cro-Magnon, Vladimir the Impaler, or you know, whatever. Just, Crunchy it's robots. Just, mm, yeah, that that too, that works. Regardless, thank you, you three, so much for being the most recent subscribers. And to whoever unsubscribed, shame on you. Yes. I'm also going to do that thing. If you watch any YouTube videos that um, YouTubers do about the channel analytics, I think it really annoys me. But when, when I look at it, I find the uh, bigger channels. I also find it happens here. I just got to I just got to find it. Just give me a second. For sure. Do you want to hit the music or? Uh... Oh, maybe I should do that, too. I'm so into complaining. No, it's all good. I just uh, didn't want to forget it. I'm trying to come up with a checklist now at the start of each episode. There we go. Nice elevator music that will not get us copyright strikes. It all sounds so loud in my headset, but when I play it back after I test the recording, it's not. It really isn't. It's at a really nice level from what I can hear. While we're waiting, I am uh, smoking tonight a uh, to the Tom Howard Upal that you sent me. Yes, I, I thought I noticed that uh, right away. Many moons ago, I since this is kind of our international pipe smoking day episode uh well it'll come out after but we're recording it before uh, time travel so, uh, it's really it's really uh, a thing timey wimey stuff and uh you know i thought that a nice uh generous pipe would be uh suitable for the occasion especially since for the past two weeks i haven't really been out to enjoy a pipe all that much and uh with it, I'm smoking a mixture of uh, C&D's Epiphany mixed with Rat Ray's uh, Bagpiper's Dream. So a nice little uh, uh, aromatic English. Okay, so I'm probably going to do a little trick of editing later on just so I can throw this in here somewhere, but the thing I was talking about is I've seen YouTubers, and bigger ones than us, you know, saying, hey, you know, guys, you know, if you would, if, if all of you who are unsubscribed would subscribe to the channel, we'd have more subscribers and, you know, blah, 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 which is all true, but the numbers just don't lie, I mean... 83.5% of our views are from unsubscribed people. 
Interesting. I did the math on that. We currently have 163 subscribers, and that if that makes up only 16.5%, if the other 83% of the people, well, let's say 80%, because I'm going to say, you know, there's got to be some click-throughs. Hey, I'm going to see if this video is interesting, and then, you know, somebody moved on. You know, that happens. So you're not going to get the whole 83%. Like, that's just impossible. But I'm sure we could probably convince 80% of that 83% to, to, to subscribe. And doing the numbers, we would go from 163 to over 1,000 if those 80% would subscribe instead of just watching the videos. But do what you want. I'm not asking for money. Just let's get us up there a little bit. We, we've, been, we've been coasting it over in the, in the, in the, uh, you know, the, the mid-hundreds for a year now. Let's, let's get some, some more, more subscribers going on. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's a simple thing to do. We're not asking you to join our Patreon that doesn't exist or uh, anything. I briefly thought about it, but you no, know, it's just too, con too complicated for me over here. You could do it, but eh, we don't need it. <laughs> it's no, I mean, this is for fun. You know, it's, uh, you know, if it was something that actually was a cost burden I could see that but uh, you know I uh, think we're not in a, we're not in a position where it would make sense no we're not professional YouTubers we're amateur YouTubers smoke so went down the wrong way ah uh, fun now, so what are you smoking tonight tobacco so well, I would hope so <laughs> well it, the other one's legal here so I could be I could be you don't know oh for sure it's I'm legal not here I, too, but. I'm not <clears throat> but I am smoking so a four noggins blend um one of their house blends uh Baker Street USA it's actually got five years on it I got it in 2016 hmm What type of uh, blend is that? It's in English. Mm. And I'm smoking out, burning my finger, and smoking it in uh, one of my first Cobb mods, the country gentleman that turned into a straight church warden. Called a five-star gentleman. I like it. Yeah, I can smoke damn near anything in that without getting a uh, tongue bite. It's a, definitely a handy pipe to have around for some of the for some uh, notorious blends. Yes, indeed. So, on the TV aspect, my wife and I have been rewatching Buffy. We're on to season three now. Oh, nice. It stinks because none of the services that, that we can have here to, to get the shows have angels, so we can't we can't do the thing where we watch them tandemly. I wanted to do that, but I can't get it anywhere. Literally nowhere has it in Canada. Or at least that I have, wow. anyway. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Netflix used to, but it disappeared. Yeah, I think Netflix was how my wife watched uh, both Buffy and Angel. She didn't watch them concurrently, but uh, I think she watched Buffy and then watched Angel. There's just some odd times, you know, where the characters cross over, and it makes more sense if you're watching them at the same time, because it's like the Flash crossovers that we've covered in the past. It They they were concurrent. They were on one right after the other, so those two episodes made more sense when taken together. Right. I gotcha. Well, my wife and I started a new show the other day. Uh, we started watching Cobra Kai on uh, Netflix. Cobra Kai. Yes. Isn't that the Karate Kid extension? Yeah, it's the uh, uh, Karate Kid uh, TV series where it follows. Uh, it's more about um, the villain uh, from the Karate Kid uh, kind of, uh, you know, 
that stars him and restarting Cobra Kai uh, after kind of being down on his luck and everything. And I think it's been, uh, it, it's definitely enjoyable so far. I, I'm really liking it. You know, I heard nothing but good things about it. And uh, I just didn't feel like paying for YouTube Red to, to watch it. And uh, thankfully now it's on uh, Netflix. And I think Netflix is continuing it. And uh, I hope they let them just kind of do their thing because what they have right now, it's uh, just a, a fun watch. You know, like Karate Kid wasn't a you know, huge you know, mainstay in my like uh, favorite movies growing up, but I, I certainly liked it. And, uh, you know, certainly like one of those iconic 80s duos is uh, um, Danny and uh, Mr. Miyagi. Uh, and kind of seeing Danny and uh, they don't necessarily make Danny a, a villain or anything. It's more just, uh, you know, he's just kind of like the somewhat of an antagonist, but not like a, a malicious one. It's just more of like, you know, they're rivals. They're never, or at least right now, they're not going to be friends. Uh, but uh, I like it so far. Uh, it, they do a pretty good job of humanizing all the characters. Everyone has their rough edges, but the and you mainly kind of see their rough edges, but you also see the good aspects about them too. Good, good, good. I've been wondering about that one myself. Like I've seen it on Netflix, going, eh, well, maybe. I I liked the Karate Kid movies uh, when they when they came out and I always love Mr. Miyagi wax on wax off. That doesn't work by the way, but it's always fun for movies. For sure. When they even kind of I'm sure if you've seen any like commercials for it, they kind of uh, uh, riff on that where the student uh, the first Cobra Kai student is washing a window and he asks. Um, asks them, uh, is there a special way that you want me to, you know, wash this window? And he goes, uh, not really, do whatever. And so, just kind of like a fun, kind of like, uh, you know, seeing the divergence, the divergence of uh, everything. But, you know, the, the nice thing too is just, you know, right now the, the main character, I, I'm blanking on his name, uh, but he, you know, isn't necessarily that likable of a person, but, you know, you feel sympathy for him and you do see the aspects of good that are within him. And I think that that stuff is only going to continue to uh, uh, grow as this, the season goes on. So I, I highly recommend it. Johnny Lawrence, is that the the guy? Yes. Yeah, that, I think that's the name of uh, the main character. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that's the character's name. I didn't give you the actor's name, which is William Zabka, by the way. IMBD on the phone. Nice. Yeah, no, it's uh, uh, Johnny, you know, he's, you know, kind of a jerk and everything, but he... You know, he, he steps in to help the new kid that's kind of, you know, this series version of Danny. And, uh, you know, they don't necessarily, he, you know, they're not necessarily fond of each. Well, he's not necessarily fond of the, of the kid, but uh, the kid kind of immediately looks up to him and stuff. And uh, Johnny finally just kind of begrudgingly, so, you know, decides to take up teaching karate and uh, helping him out. And uh, they're a nice little kind of like, they bounce off each other really well. 
Well, that's good. I mean, you can't have your your main characters not, you know, coalescing like that. It's really not going to uh, make for a good series. Yeah, and and Danny, uh, uh, in contrast, is a really interesting character because, you know, he's been successful ever since, you know, those movies. And it's kind of a little bit got, gone into his head a bit. He's not like... Again, like he's not necessarily a bad guy. Uh, like he kind of suffers from, uh, um, you know, nice parent syndrome where he's a little too lenient with his kids and kind of lets them do what, that kind of lets them walk all over him because he's just trying to be the nice guy and the, you know, the fun dad. Um, but there's, Kind of setting things up to for him to kind of work towards fixing that area of his life because his daughter is kind of dating or at least is romantically interested with um the the new villain for the the villain for the the teens in this uh the bully essentially mm. so so that's fun it's and it's they had like a, a dinner together where Danny is talking to uh, the kid that's a, uh, the bully. And uh, what's fun is that you can kind of tell that Danny can tell that there's something off about him and is kind of able to sniff through the BS that he's trying to defeat him. And, you know, I, I'm very interested to see where this goes. It sounds fun. It really does. I might give it a try. Yeah. What season hey, are they on? Know, I think they have three seasons so far. So if you, you know, if we ever want to do a, uh, you know, talk about that as well, you know, kind of do some episode reviews, I would be down for that too. We shall see. Yeah. You know, all if you like it or not, but I think, I think there's a good chance you'll like it. I'll probably give it a shot because, after all, it's different from most everything that's on right now. Yeah, no, the, it's refreshing. That I, I really enjoy its uh, perspective. All right, so you, you mentioned at the top of the uh, the show that you were sad. What's going on there? Ah, uh, well, I was uh, I've had these two estate pipes that I've uh, had since November, and I've just because of everything with my son, uh, I've been so busy, and at night, if I'm, do I want to work on fixing up these estates or do I want to go out and write? And I've had some different projects I've been working on for the past, you know, few months and that's taken precedence and I figured why uh, the other night, why not uh, finally get those pipes fixed up and uh, so I can actually use them and uh, one is uh, was a geode uh, which is uh, a Pipe that they sold at uh, Iwan Reese, um, and then I believe it's a, an Italian briar, and then and it's kind of like a pot slash billiard type pipe. Uh, but it, you know, it looked really nice and had kind of like a, a nickel, you know, ring around it, which I, I think I found out was probably to kind of stop a crack, and so it made it a little less. Uh, oh. That's a little disappointing, but you know what? It, overall, it's still just, it looks nice with good, it on. Good, good, good. Um, and then the other was a Peterson, and it was, I got it for $20, which, you know, I, and I was excited about it because I always see stories about people that, you know, find these great deals on pipes at estate sales or, you know, tucked away somewhere. And this one was finally like my chance to, 
kind of have that story. And I get them both fixed up. Uh, and I had been kind of working on them on and off for the past uh, few months. Like we were chat uh, during one of the This Pipe Life uh, meetings that I was able to attend, I was cleaning them both. And uh, I had just finished uh, using pipe cleaners on the last one uh, the other night. And they had been buffed, uh, polished. Uh, the stems had been repolished. And it was all looking nice. And I went and started putting the stem on the Peterson. And I noticed that it was being a li little bit difficult for some reason. And it was giving me trouble, and which kind of confused me. And so I was like, kind of like twisting and trying to get it to fit in. And then all of a sudden, I just felt it like snap like in my hands oh, and no. yeah and so the thankfully it was just the stem itself that broke um and i've actually uh, it's funny because uh nate uh from nate rose uh pipe co uh reached out and i was like hey dm me the pictures and everything and sent him some and he said that uh, it's fixable, so uh, there's that. So it's not, uh, you know, so I definitely, you know, can still use it. It's just I have to go, I, I, I definitely don't have the means to fix it myself because uh, it, it's definitely too big of a project for me. But uh, thankfully, someone else can, uh, you know, someone that's more into pipe repair should be able to fix it. Yeah, I was looking at those pictures myself. I saw the I saw your uh, your tweet out there with the with the the stem and one, one the stem on one side and the and the tenon actually still in the stumble. So, hmm. And my mind immediately went to probably maybe very close to the same place Nate's went because if if I know him well enough, he'll pro he'd probably just want to you know. He, You'd probably just want to uh, take a screw and get it into the part that's in the stuck in the in the in the in the pipe and pull it out. That's easy. That's the easy part. Anybody could do that. But then you'd have to get a piece of Delrin, black Delrin, and make a new tenon. Hmm. Or you could just you make a whole new mouthpiece. Get somebody to to make one or you can buy one of those prefab ones you know like from uh... oh the name of the site's blanking me from on freehand? that's them uh, yeah there's a couple ways you go, go about it yeah the Delrin one way more complicated I wouldn't want to try it myself either I don't have the drill press for it yeah if I had a drill press I'd probably try to fix it myself <laughs> well, I definitely uh let you have a uh, have a shot at it because it's definitely uh, definitely above uh, my uh, my very meager skills in pipe repair. So it's a bummer, but you know, no matter what, like it was a twenty dollar Peterson, and so I think I need. I mean, I I haven't done too much in terms of. Uh, looking to get it fixed yet but uh i think no matter what i'm still going to be ahead oh yeah absolutely and getting one off of ebay absolutely you're gonna be ahead like i mean even if you have to say you know even decide you know just to buy a buy a new stem you know like from vermont freehand get it shipped get it to you and then the time to to match it up and whatnot. Still, like if, if you did it that way, you're probably looking at maybe you got forty bucks into the pipe, fifty at most. Yeah. And if you go send it to somebody else to fix, maybe you're looking at seventy or eighty then. But still, that's still a good deal on a Peterson. Yeah, for sure. And if it, I have to get a new stem, it won't be a big deal because it's a P-lip. And I don't mind P-lips, but uh, I definitely prefer fishtail. 
Yes. That is a bummer when you get something like that happening and you've uh, just got it down to where he got him cleaned up and okay. Snap. That stinks. Right. Yeah, it's frustrating. But, uh, you know, it, it's not the worst thing to happen. You know, and at least it wasn't like one of my favorites. And I, uh, and the, I posted about it on uh, this pipe life, and uh, one of the guys on there, uh, Zouave, um, uh he posted a picture that he had just done with his pipe, where he was going to have a pipe outside and slipped on some ice and fell, and the Part of the shank broke. Oh, and the no. shank broke at the shank. Ooh. Which, um, yeah, I would, uh, I would be quite upset if that, uh, that happened to me. All these sad international pipe day smoking day stories. This is a horrible pipe episode. <laughs> Here, let's break everybody's hearts and talk about the break the pipes we've broken in the past. Yeah. It's more fitting for like uh, the 2020 International Pipe Smoking Day rather than 2021. Ish. I mean, 2020 International Pipe Smoking Day, we hadn't been locked down at all yet. Right. I guess it's fitting for this one. Well... I don't understand government sometimes. I know we try to shy away from politics, but since we got onto the COVID talk a little bit, there are like we we're just coming out of a lockdown and they're already preparing for the next one in April, apparently. So they're going, okay, that, that's just insane. Uh And this is why a socialist country doesn't work properly. Yeah, I hear you on that. So all you Americans that are trying to go socialist, you're idiots. I'd gladly switch places with you. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that there's some that would, uh, uh, I would gladly uh, trade them for you over here. You don't know how much easier that would make my life. I could actually monetize the stuff I want to monetize without actually having to do extra paperwork. Yeah, other than the the child care, you know, like post pregnant, you know, the pregnancy stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That part, that part, I wouldn't enjoy too much, but. Advantages, disadvantages, but that's something I'd probably be willing to give up. For sure. And partially because we're already done. We're we're definitely done having kids, so. Four is enough. Maybe even too many. I'm not sure yet. Give me a little time to think on that one. Well, with that, at least, you know, the odds are more in your favor that at least one of them will try to look after you when you're older. Maybe. But I would much rather, you know be in my grandma's shoes at 96 and still living at home oh for sure if I have to live that long another let's see to get to 96 from here 
would be another 53 years. That's... When you look at it like that, that's still a long time. I know it's not guaranteed, but still. Potentially another 53 years from now, this could still be around. Could you imagine being the old guy that podcasts? <laughs> I'd still do it. I would. I think someone said, I, I, I saw the other day that uh, in 40 years, retirement homes is going to be have... Um, just be full of like uh, people playing Super Smash Brothers and uh, watching like uh, streamers playing games online. Oh, and the and the, obviously this wouldn't uh, uh, count for you because I know you hate it, but uh, they'd also have uh, the uh, marathons of uh, the Office going on in the background. Oh, that would drive me nuts. I know. So do you do anything uh, for International Pipe Smoking Day to kind of, you know, take advantage of, uh, you know, the, the events that are going on? Well, I, I try to, uh, you know, take advantage of the sales where I can sometimes. But, you know, I actually got the hankering to buy other things this year, so I, I actually spent any money that I already had, say that I was saving one. Yeah, I just... I was looking around going, you know what? I've got enough pipes. I've got like a dozen on my bench in the other part of the room that need to be cleaned up and, and uh, um, restored and whatnot. And I've got plenty of tobacco right now. And Internet International Pipe Smoking Day is going to come around again. And there'll be other sales. So, yeah, not this year. I'm just going to... Let's see, that's on, that happens to fall on Saturday. So I'll probably just have a smoke. Just grab a pipe uh, at some point throughout the day. Come down here and just have a smoke. And it's probably, That's my plan. It's like just... Maybe have a have an extra pipe this week. Yeah. It'll be interesting uh, this year. I, I kind of have to will have to talk about it with my wife because uh, normally I have Valentine's Day go towards that, um, but she actually surprised me this year with. Uh, um, I've been doing this uh, for Christmas. My wife got me this um, subscription service where they uh, send you <clears throat> snacks and candy from different countries of the world. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I've heard of something like that. She had done it for me a couple of years ago, but uh, um, something went wrong and it didn't activate, and so we never got it. Um, and I've always kind of teased her about it. <laughs> um and so for Christmas, she uh, finally did that for me. Uh, but uh, I think while you're subscribed, you can kind of do special orders uh, from them of different and pick different stuff because they they send you a box uh, around, and it's usually you know it's always from one country. So far, we I've gotten like um, France uh, and the netherlands so far and uh and uh, also uh, ukraine ukraine was this month and uh and so she got me a couple of things uh from like the uk and uh like uh popcorn that tastes like bubble tea and uh and all these things and so and I, i'm happy to have it i was like oh i bet this is probably not going to bode well for uh international pipe smoking day because not only do I have that to contend with, but uh, I'm also saving up to hopefully purchase a uh, bagpipe either next month or the month after, and those aren't cheap. And uh, No, they are not. Like, so, yeah, we shall, we shall see. Yeah, no, I just, uh, the money I, I was saving, like, my plan was to buy Bing's favorite this year. <clears throat> but no, I'll just hold that off for another year. Yeah, I've waited this long. I can wait a little bit longer. 
But uh, no, this year I uh, uh, bought a couple of games. I uh, bought a whole bunch of eBooks because, like, if you if you do it right and you look and you, and you price it right, you can get quite a bit for just a little. Okay, I think I added ten or twelve books to my uh, to my library for under fifty bucks. Nice. And, and all across the map, like there was some Star Wars, some Western, a um, couple of uh, theology books that I wanted hmm. that I was looking at. So like all over the place. Yeah, my wife got a Kindle for Christmas, and uh, with it, she got uh, two Audible credits, and she sent them to me because she was like, uh, you know, she she doesn't really use Audible, and uh, thought I would uh, appreciate having them. And it took me all month to figure out like what to to spend it on. Oh, I know the selection that they have out there for this kind of stuff, whether whether it be like the ebook format that you use on your Kindle or the audio format that Audible uses, like, there's just so much out there. Like, and especially when you can, with Audible, when you can pick anything you want for one credit in, there you go, like, free forever. They're yours. Right. And it was, yeah, it was, it was really hard to narrow it down because I have, you know, I love history, but I also love, like, uh, I don't know, like, weird true stories and, and mysteries. And, uh, and so it took me a long time to finally narrow down uh, what I wanted to pick up. And, yeah, that was another thing, too. It's like, well, I mean, this audio book is, like, seven hours, but this one that I'm kind of mildly interested in, but uh, not sure about, like, this is actually 20 hours. So, yeah. I, Cause I had an audible uh, subscription a couple of years ago and that's when I picked up all the Redwall audiobooks and also uh, managed to pick up uh, the Lord of the Rings series. If I did it again, I would probably pick up uh, the Narnia series. <laughs> I'm just scrolling through my Audible list on my phone here. Mm -hmm. And a good majority of the books I have are like getting up there in, in time. Like, I got one down here six hours, but then I got The Fellowship of the Ring. 19 hours, 7 minutes. <laughs> and that's not that's not even the longest one. I believe it. I think I encountered one on there that was like 55 hours. That was kind of like a history one. I got that beat. 63 hours. Nice. But that's more than one book. It's the uh, Sherlock Holmes collection. Oh, cool. That would have been a good one. And I also have the Monster monster Collection. It's got uh, Frankenstein, Dracula. What else is in here? I didn't want to freaking listen to it. I just want to see what's in it. Oh, you just give me the freaking list of the chapters. Where's the description? Uh, here we go. Here we go. What do we got in here? Uh, Jekyll and Hyde, Frankenstein, and Dracula are the three that are in that collection. Huh. That one's only 30 hours. I think, though, the longest individual book I have on here is 26 and a half hours. Order of the Phoenix. Ah, uh, yeah, no, those uh, <laughs> those definitely get up there. 
they started out fairly reasonable. I mean, the early ones, I remember she was just getting her getting her footing and writing like basically what I what I could, they figured to be children's stories. Like the first two or three books were only like eight, nine, ten hours long. You know, something that if you were reading the physical book, you could read in a day. Then they started fire. getting long. Yeah. <laughs> then she became an author. Yes. Uh, I went to the, when I was in Scotland, I went to the coffee shop that uh, she wrote at, uh, the first book at. And they had a lot of uh, Harry Potter stuff there. Like the bathrooms were covered in uh, uh, message, uh, Harry Potter messages from fans from all around the world. That's neat. Uh, but yeah, International Pipe Smoking Day. Uh, for me, like, I appreciate the, the day because that's uh around the time uh feb like february about uh nine years ago was when i started smoking a pipe and really following all that stuff and like soon after i was doing it uh pipes and cigars did their uh uh did a mystery like uh basically like a grab grab bag kind of thing where if you were uh, one of the first so many people to order from their site they you know sent you stuff like a, a goodie bag with uh, different uh things in it and so i uh i hopped on that and expanded my collection a bit uh of a uh, pipe tobacco and uh trying to remember and the only tin that i really remember getting from that was uh uh manhattan afternoon but uh, I know I picked up uh, other things from there too. But uh, I don't know I like the fact that uh, it was really beneficial for me, especially starting out as a pipe smoker, because it kind of gave me uh, some more options to work with with uh, the pipe. Me, I've always been the guy that looks for the sales. I so, you know, having International Pipe Smoking Day in February, like right after my birthday, literally a week later, all these sales going on. When you, you know, when you know you have a little bit a bit of money that you don't have to spend on bills and stuff, like automatically because it's your birthday. I mean, that's just perfect. So, like, I usually take advantage of them. Yeah. yeah I usually hold on to some Christmas money for uh, for it, which sometimes it can be a little hard. <laughs> depending on some of the sales that'll pop up here and there with the newsletters uh, for uh, new pipe tobacco. But uh, I usually pull some stuff back just to, to make an order. But yeah, like it, this year was just one of those things going, well, I'll just wait, maybe get something, something a little later in the year. Cause I've got a, I've got a freaking tote sitting beside me. That's full of tobacco. That's been sitting there in, in, in deep storage, basically, because I've had so many other jars just littered around me right now that are yeah. open that I'm working on that I'm sitting going, I really need to get through these before I even think about opening anything in that, in that other tote now. But it's just one of those things. Like you probably get, you know, I don't know if you, you have this problem or not. But when I when I get smoking, I want to smoke a variety. Like I don't want to just smoke one till it's gone. Right. So I'm, I'm thinking I've got, I, yeah. I've got I've got like over my head. I've got a, over here. I've got about half a dozen jars that are just there, open things I've been smoking. Over here, there's five. Behind off my shoulder here is another, not 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 uh, not right here, but that you can't see off camera is another two, and then there's like another half dozen right there with a frog Borton label on it, starting there and going back that way. 
another about half a dozen to a dozen. And down here, over off this shoulder where you can't see, there's more. And in that cupboard right there, there's more. And they're all open, and I'm smoking out of all of them. That's why this little little tiny jam jar from 2016 is still around. <laughs> and I've got about a dozen more of those from that. Yeah. Yeah, that's the fun part about being a pipe smoker is just, uh, you know, anytime I'm going to make an order, like I, I just have so much fun kind of going through the, the, any website that I'm ordering from and just kind of looking at the selection and kind of figuring out what I want you know, or what I'm interested in ordering and then, you know, pick out your stuff, go, go to the checkout and realize you've put way more in than, than you mean to and that you need to make some adjustments and then uh, go from there. The other fun thing is too, picking the website that you're going to order from because there's so many. Mm -hmm. And now there's a whole bunch that uh, are like uh there's a bunch of new ones like like cup of joe's i know has a website that they send out i think internationally um there's there's the country squire uh smoking pipes pipes and cigars with it in the u.s um god who else pipes and tobacco sends internationally ea carry they uh run a website they send internationally hmm. So, I mean, there's all kinds of choices out there. So you have to go, okay, where you, where, where do you first, where you have to decide where you want to buy from. Then you have to decide what are you going to buy. Right. No, it's, and that is fun. I've, I've used most of them. I don't think I've used, uh, four noggins, but I've done a uh, cup of Joe's in the past. I've done uh, pipes and cigars, which, you know, I, they're, they have their good moments. Uh, a couple of years ago, they made the mistake of uh, changing over their website uh, or their intern something, some part of like essential part of their website like right before International Pipe Smoking Day and like the resulting fallout. Oh, I know the fallout months. from that was horrible. I don't know how many customers they lost over that. It was a big it was a big number though. Yeah. It didn't affect me too bad. Um, I like I definitely had some things that uh, I had to wait on. But uh, and you know, I'll still use them if I see something that uh, interests me. So I, I haven't like boycotted them or anything. I have just because I live in the wrong country. Right. They won't ship to me. And there's so many blends they had that I wanted to try early on because I found, you know, I'd found three websites when I first started ordering tobaccos uh, from the internet. Smoking pipes, which I still use to this day. Four noggins, which I haven't used in few years they switched they switched management and then the prices started going up to where they weren't reasonable anymore and pipes and cigars and I was like oh man like you know how every, every once in a while you'll see they got like the, the the basket pipes and you can buy like a, a bundle of them like three you can buy three for like 30 bucks or something like that 10 bucks mm -hmm. a pipe and I was like oh that I want that you live in Canada we won't ship to you bugger <laughs> yeah they, they definitely will 
they definitely have uh, the ability to send me an email that'll cause me to kind of stop and uh, like last year they sent a one for like a really good deal on Peterson Pipe and like I almost broke down and, and did it but I was like uh you know I already have plenty of Petersons I have this great Peterson estate that I bought that I need to fix up anyway uh that I'm sure will be a great pipe um uh, I'll hold off on it but it was you know like if I didn't have a whole lot of Peterson pipes like it was uh, it was a deal, like it, like a legitimately like amazing, uh, amazing deal. So I, I will still use them because I know they do have the ability to put something out there that's uh, really good. Yep. But anyway, we're still looking at the time here. We are passing 50 minutes now. I think we should, uh, what do you call it? Give the, give the people a break. You know, it's, it's International <laughs> Pipe Smoking Day belated, so we'll just uh, we'll just call it here. So, okay, guys, if you want to follow us throughout the week, you can find me on Twitter personally at uh, Doctor Alien Two Hundred One. You can find all my gaming stuff there, and sometimes some personal stuff. And the show is at Syndicated Pipe on Twitter. Uh, you can always email us at reverseflashtime at gmail.com. And I used to have a website that I've run, but you know what? I haven't updated that thing in months. So you can go there if you want to. You're not going to find anything current. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, feel, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to tweet at us, uh, DM us, uh, leave a comment in our videos. And, uh, you know, we will uh, read them on the show and uh, get back to you. About them. And, and subscribe uh, because we'll just shout you out because that's what I do. Absolutely. And uh, for to all our subscribers out there, you know, the 20% of our listeners that uh, are subscribers, uh, we appreciate you for subscribing to the other 80%. We appreciate you as well, but why don't you just click that button too? Yes, and and ring the bell. Do all the I'll do all the YouTube stuff since you know you're watching this on YouTube, and if you're listening to the podcast where we actually have a little bit more of a follow, uh, more of a consistent following. Thank you to you guys as well. Yes, and uh, to everyone out there, from all the you know, listeners to uh, the Briar Report to uh, everyone out there uh, from uh, this pipe life and everywhere, have a happy International Pipe Smoking Day. And we will see you next week. Chat with you later.